Okay, and welcome back, students who are taking financial accounting. And if you were watching the last video, you'll know that I'm just going to pick up where I left off. However, those of you who had eagle eyes, you'll no have noticed that in the last video I was doing video number five, but yet my introduction slide only had point four. So, um, like I said, this is ad hoc. It's coming out of my brains, and I forget to do things, and I make mistakes. Okay, but hopefully I catch my mistakes. And so if you look at video four, you're going to see point four. If you're going to look at video five, you're going to see point four. And I'm telling you about it in video six, which I just corrected. Okay. All right. So let's jump on down to where we left off. Okay. So in the last uh, video, I had talked about here's the chart of accounts, nothing more than a listing of the general ledger accounts. And if you, you know, the general ledger accounts have balances and we can create a trial balance which is a summarization of you know that information the general ledger right so okay so how do we get information onto our books okay well in a business transactions occur and all transactions have documentation okay or should have documentation it needs to be created Right? Like, for example, if you go to Home Depot and you buy something and you'll get a receipt, okay? You know, that was a transaction. I needed these supplies, so I paid for them and I was given a receipt, okay? That receipt is the documentation for that transaction. Or you might have um, an owner who comes to you and says, hey, I need uh, 25 bucks. Well, you know, you have a what's called a petty cash box where you can pull out the $25 and give it to the owner. You know, but you uh, you need to create, you know, write a receipt for them. If you don't create the receipt, you know, now all of a sudden you don't have the documentation that you need to support that particular transaction. Everything that happens in a business is a transaction and there's documentation for it. And having that documentation, that initial uh, documentation is what we use in order to get the information on our books and we do that with what's called a general journal okay so um, as you can see I have my general ledger okay and in my general ledger I have my accounts and we know what the chart of accounts is so whenever I have a transaction how it gets to my books is I take and record the information in a journal. Now here I wrote general journal um, because every business starts out with a general journal. Okay, that's the very first journal. Um, however, depending upon the business, we can create different kinds of journals. A journal is still a, a journal is a journal is a journal. Okay, they all have, you know, whenever you have a transaction, it ends up being recorded in a journal. The only reason why we create multiple journals is because we want to group like transactions together. Like I said in the ver this previous video, um, every business starts out with a general journal. Okay, and if you think about it from like this perspective, I could put all, you know, I can have just one journal and call it a general journal. And if I have a thousand transactions that day, I can put all 1000 transactions into this general journal. All right. So you take your initial documentation, that receipt, invoice, whatever it is, memo or whatever, and you write it in your general journal. Okay. Now, if I have a thousand transactions that day and each and every day, you know, that general journal gets filled up pretty quickly and it starts to become difficult to find information when you have to go back and, and look at it. Um, the reason why is because the information that's in the general journal, you write it in. So I have, let's say I have um, entry, I'm just going to do it in, in a short, easy to understand format. Let's say an entry one, I, I affect cash and rent. Entry two, I affect cash and accounts receivable. And entry three, I affect uh, supplies and accounts payable. Entry four, um, 
I receive uh, from, from an accounts receivable, I receive cash. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm creating specific journal entries for each and every transaction. So I had four transactions. But notice that I've used cash one, two, three times. Okay. Now, if I have a thousand transactions and I want to know what the cash balance is, I'd have to go through all 1,000 transactions in my journal in order to be able to add up and figure out what the balance is in my cash account. What we do with the information once we put it into the general journal or into any journal is we have to do what's called a post. We post the information into the specific general ledger accounts. And what that does is it's rearranging the information. Okay. I mean, remember in the general ledger accounts, I had said like we have account 100, which was cash, uh, 110 accounts uh, receivable, 210 say accounts payable. And since supplies, uh, I'm going to call out a supplies expense account. So that starts with a five because it's an expense. All right. Um, rent, I'm going to call 510 for rent because that's an expense. So these are my general ledger accounts. So what I'm doing is, is I'm going to take, when I post these, all of these, these journal entries, I'm going to rearrange them and group the like information together. Meaning I'm going to take this cash and put it into the cash account. I'm going to take this cash and put it into the cash account. I'm going to take this cash and put it into the cash account. So when I add up, you know, when I add up all three of those, I have, let's say, a balance of $300. Okay. I'm going to take my rent and put that in the rent. I'm going to take accounts receivable and stick that in receivable. So you see how I'm just rearranging that information. Okay. And as I rearrange that information by posting into the general ledger accounts, I can create balances in the accounts. Okay. And when I create balances in the accounts, I can create a trial balance. All right. So it, I, um, I know I jumped a, a little bit ahead here. Um, and I presented some of the same information, but also in a uh, different manner. But what I wanted to get at here is, is, okay, every business starts out with one journal, a general journal. But if I have a thousand transactions, it becomes difficult to... Uh, find the information you know in the general journal when I'm trying to find a specific transaction so what we do is we create additional journals called and they're called specific journals and why are they called specific because they're you know we're grouping like information together and these are some of the more common ones okay GJE is a, an abbreviation for general journal The E is like entry, general journal entry, if you want to think about the E, but it's the general journal. CR is for cash receipts, meaning any time that we receive cash, all right, instead of putting it in the general journal, we'll put it into the cash receipt journal. CD is cash disbursements, meaning any time that we pay cash out, instead of putting it in the, the general journal, we'd put it in the cash disbursement journal. And PR is an abbreviation for payroll. So whenever we have a payroll, all of our payroll entries, we put into a payroll journal instead of the general journal. So now this way, instead of having a thousand entries in my general journal, right, if I have a, you know, something that, let's just say for payroll, oh, well, I can come over, if I put the entry into the payroll journal, I could come over to the payroll journal and instead of looking through, you know, a thousand entries, there's going to be, say, maybe 20 entries. And it's a lot easier for me to find what I need to find in 20 entries than I do in a thousand. Right. So that's why we create different journals. But regardless of the name of the journal, remember, a journal is a journal is a journal. OK, all the information is entered into the journals the same exact way. You generally have a date, description, debits and credits. Um, and a posting reference column, and sometimes a document a document number. Okay, but that's getting a little more detailed than I want to go. But the point being is, is that it doesn't matter how many journals you have. Okay, you're not going to create a journal just for one entry. You're going to group like transactions together, and 
you know, based upon the volume of those types of transactions. So these are the more four more common types of journals that you'll find. Now, let's say um, we buy, uh, no, let's say we do payroll, okay? And remember, when we do payroll, okay, we're going to affect payroll ledger accounts. But we're all, you know, we also will affect a liability account. Ability, L I T Y, and will affect a cash account. Okay. Well, you know, the cash account we're going to actually be paying out the cash. Okay. Because why? We're we're paying our employees. So let's just say for some reason. I mean, you think about this. I, you know, all journal entries can go into a general journal, okay? That's one way of doing it. Since this is a payroll entry, I could put into the payroll uh, journal. Oh, well, I'm paying out cash, which means I could put it in the cash disbursements journal, all right? Well, here's, you know, I could put it in three different places, all right? So which is right, right and which is wrong? If I could put it in three different places, I really shouldn't put it in three different places. I should only put it into one place. And of course, the most common place would be the, you know, the payroll journal. But if for some reason I had stuck it into the cash disbursement journal, just for some reason, or let's say it was an, you know, an odd, say, bonus payment to the owner of the company, and since we kind of like want to put odd transactions in our general journal, maybe I might have stuck it there, you know depending upon where I put it at, which one is right, right, which one is wrong? Well, neither. The whole idea is, is that you create, you know, the business creates journals for themselves with, you know, um, based upon like information to make it easier to uh, find the information when you're doing research. And here's the bottom line, okay? Regardless of which uh, journal you put it in, everything gets posted into your into the respective general ledger accounts again a journal is a journal it doesn't matter what the name of the journal is um, if i if for some reason i had put this payroll entry into my cash receipts journal which it should you know which would be the last choice you know am i wrong well you don't want to stick it in the cash receipt journal i mean obviously you would want to put it in the payroll journal but the information in the payroll in the cash receipts journal is going to end up in your general ledger account and the proper account anyway and remember the general ledger is the heart of the set of books so yeah the ent the the information gets entered into your journals but then it all gets posted in, uh, into your general ledger accounts you know that information gets rearranged and again it's grouped by like account you know general ledger account and so all of the information you know, ends up where it's supposed to be, and you can cr then create the balances, and the accountant can do uh, the work that he needs to do with it. Now, if he is going to question something, remember the bookkeeper does the data entry. Okay, and what you'll find is that for a lot of small businesses, you'll have a bookkeeper, and then the the company will have a CPA come in you know, a couple of days, a month, a quarter, whatever have you, in order to make sure the books are accurate and do whatever work that they need to do on it. So the account is going to come in, the CPA is going to come in, and he's going to, they're going to look at the general ledger and the information in the general ledger. And if they have a question, they're going to ask the bookkeeper, well, hey, I want to see this transaction. Well, it's going to be up to the bookkeeper to know, to go to whichever one of these, you know, their journals to see that entry, and then from there to go and find the original documentation. So it's more of a, uh, for a bookkeeper, it's more of a, having the journals is more of a, uh, a file and information management system, okay, that's generally accepted under generally accepted accounting principles. So everybody does it the same way because what if the bookkeeper isn't there? Maybe they got fired. Well, that CPA should be able to come in and knowing the same system as everybody, as all other bookkeepers and accountants, that book, that accountant could, you know, come in and say, 
well, you know, uh, here's a payroll entry that I want to look at. I should come into the payroll journal and be able to find that information. If I don't find it, well, maybe it was, went into the, depending upon the transaction, maybe it went into the general journal, so I'll look there. Uh, if it's not there, then I should look in the cash disbursements journal. And then lastly, I should look in the cash receipts journal, but because the account knows the flow of, of the information, they'll be able to find it. So the bookkeeper, you know, they're responsible for the data entry and posting all of that information into the general ledger. And they uh, take that information and they, you know, as the transactions occur, they put them into the, to the journals. Okay, they enter the information in the journals, and at the end of an accounting period, they post them to a general ledger. All right. Okay, so with that said, I'm at 15 minutes, so I'm going to stop here and actually pick up right where I'm leaving off.